Coming up on Night Vision News, Dr. Mariah Bergen discusses the significance of the 2024 election for students, emphasizing the importance of voting in key races and government positions. Also ahead, Mayor Anderson offers guidance for voters as the 2024 election approaches, stressing the importance of making informed decisions in the crucial races that will impact our community's future. Later in the show, we'll highlight the importance of voting and take you live to polling places across Waverly, where voters are making their voices heard this Tuesday night. Good evening and welcome to this special election night edition of Night Vision News. I'm Landon Jepson. And I'm Josephine Lunescus Broomhall. Thank you for joining us as we bring you comprehensive co coverage of the 2024 election. From local polling places to insights from community leaders, we'll take you through what's at stake at Voters Take Their Choices tonight. Stay with us for the latest updates and analysis on this important night. Let's get right into it. The 2024 election is a crucial time for students to exercise their right to vote, with significant races and governmental positions at stake. Night Vision News reporter Zach Heine has more. Election day rapidly approaching, the time has come for Warburg students to cast their votes. While the presidential race is receiving a lot of attention, students should keep their eyes out for local races as well. A Dr. Mariah Bergen, a professor of mathematics at Wartburg, has worked polls in the Waverly area since 2008. She talked about some local races for students to keep an eye on. When you vote in an election, you're not only voting for president, but you're voting for a lot of uh, sort of countrywide offices. So you're voting for the House. There's four different House members in Iowa. They're all up for election this year but you're also voting for statewide offices. So in Iowa, we have senators, we have representatives. With all those races for students to watch, it's easy to forget the reason why voting in this particular election is so important. It's been very strange for the last several years because the person who was president now wants to become president again after losing the election, which in my lifetime is completely unprecedented. So um, I think it's really important, I think, Everyone should have good ideas about what both of the candidates think and feel and what positions they're taking on important issues. And um, I think it, people need to vote. They need to decide who they want to support. There's many different ways for students to vote, including absentee ballots and traveling home. But for those wanting to vote in Waverly, the process can seem daunting and confusing. Students who want to vote in person will vote at the Waverly Public Library on Election Day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if the student is already registered to vote in Waverly, then all they need to do is bring a photo ID that's not expired. So that could be a driver's license, that could be a non-driver ID card, that could be a passport. Um, unfortunately, the Wartburg ID doesn't count because it doesn't have an expiration date on it. If it did, that would count. But for students who haven't registered to vote in Waverly, the process is a bit different. And then if they haven't registered to vote, then they have to do what's called proving residency. And that's why uh, the vice president for student life emailed everyone who lives in the dorms a message that basically says, hey, we agree, this person lives in dorms. That's, and you can just bring that on your phone to prove residency. The 2024 election will be the first chance for a majority of Warburg students to cast their vote in a presidential election. With that power comes a lot of responsibility. And Dr. Bergen believes that students should honor that responsibility. For me, it is your civic responsibility that you should vote in the election. Reporting for Night Vision News, I'm Zach Heine. Thank you, Zach and Dr. Bergen, for sharing that important information. It's local elections that many voters will feel the greatest impact from. Mark Anderson, mayor of the city of Waverly, spoke on the significance of local elections and their importance in voters' lives. Waverly Mayor Mark Anderson, who began his tenure in January 2024, discussed local infrastructure and the impact of upcoming town elections. He stressed how vital local decisions are for the community's well-being. I mean, obviously, the national elections, like the president, are super important. But if you want to talk about things that are going to affect your day-to-day -day life, that's going to be at the county and city level, okay? For example, 
We don't have anyone running for office at the city level on this run, but we have two referendums. So whether your taxes are going to go up or not, the, how the you know, real estate taxes, will depend on these votes. The mayor explained that many of the issues Iowan voters are concerned about are addressed at the state level. The House, Senate, and the State House, the governor, are all held by one party. So things have drifted in one direction. Okay, so if you uh, are concerned about education, uh, you're going to you want to vote at the state level. That's going to be really important. If you're worried about carbon pipelines, that's going to be at the state level. So again, the lower you are on the ballot, the more those decisions actually affect you. So like immigration is a big national issue, but not probably going to affect me or you. Uh, carbon pipelines going through nearby, that could really have a huge effect on us. Looking specifically at Waverly, Anderson discussed local infrastructure and the impact of upcoming town elections. We've been doing a lot with infrastructure lately. You know, we had to do a, a bond issue to, re, to build uh, what's now uh, the Cedar Valley, the Cedar Parkway. If we had not done that, uh, there'd be really only one way to get across the bridge right now, across the river right now. So, and again, we had to uh, release a bond to uh, fix the rail trail bridges. I mean, we all would have hated to see the rail trail close. That would have been very harmful to our community. So, yeah, these local elections, they really affect uh, our town. Finally, Mayor Anderson addressed the referendums on the ballot, explaining how these decisions will significantly impact Waverly's future. He emphasized the importance of voter participation in these critical local issues. So the referendums uh, obviously are going to be the thing. Uh, whether we're going to get uh, an aqua center or go another summer with, uh, perpetually with no pool, that will be decided on November 5. Again, same with the uh, golf course clubhouse. Um, so these will have huge impacts. Reporting for Night Vision News, I'm McKenna Kemmerer. As voters cast their ballots in any election, it's crucial for them to consider not only the national issues at stake, but also their local concerns. Issues such as infrastructure and referendums will have the most significant impact on voters, all of which are addressed at the state and local levels. Most professors spend their sabbatical doing professional development work. One Wartburg professor is doing something a little different. Night Vision News reporter Jax Cadell has more. Dr. Sean Ellenbrock has taken on an interesting sabbatical project this year, as he has been running for the Iowa House District 57. In his campaign, Dr. Ellenbrock has taken on the persona of The Dude, who was the main character in The Big Lebowski. Ellenbrock has made it important to show that he isn't just a politician, but someone who wants to represent the people. I've seen approachable and real, you know, like, a, you know, an everyday guy, you know, somebody who wants to stand up and, and make a difference as an Iowan. I can come out as, as, a, as a true moderate, which is what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm liberal in terms of social liberalism, but I'm very fiscally conservative. And so, you know, I can just come out and be myself and present myself as uh, somebody who, who um, appreciates the good things in life and, and wants to find that, that zen in a world of crazy. And uh, I think that speaks for volumes for a lot of folks that live around here. As an educator himself and being on the Waverly Shell Rock School Board, the school system has been a major importance in his life. And the reason, Dr. Ellenbrock started campaigning. During that February lobbying session, it was pretty clear that, um, you know, I'm working here for Waverly Shell Rock, and they're up here doing things that I just did not agree with for public education. And so when I came back, um, I was talking to some folks, and they're like, boy, we sure need somebody to step up. I said, ah, oh, you know. And then I started thinking, well, I've got a sabbatical this, uh, this fall. And then I really started thinking, I, I realized that this is a chance for me to, to be um, a voice for, for some people and, and uh, step up again. With how important social media has been in campaigning, no matter the position one might be running for, Dr. Ellenbrock wants to be cautious with what he puts out to the community when campaigning. Going into the world of social media uh, has given me the uh, impression that uh, there's a lot of noise out there. 
and you have to work really hard to get your message out and you have to um, work really hard to uh, make sure that people get the right and by right I mean that they're hearing uh, information that is meaningful to their lives and, 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 and not just spin. To learn more about Dr. Sean Ellenbrock's platform, you can visit seanforiowa.com. Reporting for Night Vision News, I'm Jax Cadell. Thank you, Jax, for that update on a local candidate in this year's race. Coming up after the break, we'll dive into the thoughts and opinions of students around campus regarding the upcoming election and other key issues. Stay with us to hear their perspectives. If you're into sports media, Warburg College invites you to be part of its new sports media concentration. Students prepare for work in sports-related fields from athletic reporting to sports information, broadcasting, video production, and more. Students have real-world experience with journalism and communication faculty and staff, learning valuable skills employers are looking for. Warburg students work for organizations like the NFL, NASCAR, Major League Baseball, and ESPN. The Warburg College First Year Residence Facilities are Clinton Hall, including the McCoy Living and Learning Center, the Ubuntu Center, which consists of Slife, Volmer, and Hebron Hall, and Founders Hall. Most rooms in these halls are doubles, however there are a limited number of three or four person and individual rooms. Costs for these residence halls vary. Clinton Hall features spacious lounges, workspaces, a theater room, as well as air conditioning. The recently renovated Ubuntu Center offers new study lounges, air conditioning, kitchen spaces, and greatly enhanced facilities. For more information, visit Warburg's Residential Life page. As Election Day approaches, student engagement is high on campus. Young voters are taking an active role in the democratic process and will now explore their thoughts and opinions on the upcoming election. From the issues that matter most to their voting plans, let's hear how the students are preparing to make their voices heard in this important moment in our democracy. Fortbrook students have been immersed in election talk throughout the school year so far. Freshman Lars Landa talked more about that. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of student engagement across campus, a lot of talk about politics, and I feel like we're all getting pretty informed on campus. Freshman Katie Hilton agreed with Landa's statements about being informed. Um, I feel like we're very engaged and very aware of like, what is at stake. Sophomore Sarah Nelson is excited for the opportunity to vote for the first time. Um, I think it's important because like, it's like most of our first presidential elections um, and we're getting to a point where it's like deciding our futures and we need to stop letting our parents decide for us. Freshman Cooper Fissel thinks Wartburg has prepared him well for this election. Taught by a political science professor, so um, I feel like the past couple class periods we've been talking about it pretty heavy, so I feel very well informed like on a student basis about it. Wartburg students got their chance to cast their vote on Election Day at the Waverly Public Library. Reporting for Night Vision News, I'm Allie Parkhurst. Students at Wartburg are deeply engaged and ready to make their voices heard this election season. Since Election Day is here, remember that your vote matters and can shape the future of our democracy. Inspired by the elections, Wartburg student Nate Thorpe is working to reestablish the Wartburg Democrats as an organization on campus. The Wartburg Democrats has been inactive for the past few years. Second year business and accounting major Nate Thorpe is now working to revive the Wartburg Democrats. Well, I personally am, you know, I've been a lifelong Democrat and I believe that colleges, you know, we need to have our um, different political affiliations on campus and I wanted to be the one to restart it because it wasn't here and I believe somebody needed to take the initiative. As Thorpe works to revive Warburg Democrats, he has outlined several goals for the organization once it's officially reestablished. Uh, one, I really want to bring some candidates and uh, Democratic politicians on the campus, allow them to give some speeches, you know, represent what they do in their day to day and what they believe in, you know, bring the platform to the college. And then also, I want to, you know, just get the platform, you know, through the students, not just from other people, but through the voice of the students. For Wartburg Democrats to get off the ground, students need to get involved. Thorpe discussed how students can participate and assist with the revival of the organization. 
reach out to me and um, Dr. JS, Jeff Coach Shetler. Uh, we're looking for members and it'd be great to have students here on campus come join and you know spread the word. With this election, Thorpe stressed the significance of voting as an essential civic responsibility. Yeah, be sure to get out and vote and um, no matter your political party, get out and vote. Your vote matters, your vote counts, and you have the civic duty to go out and vote on election day. Reporting for Night Vision News, I'm Allison Hasner. Currently, Wartburg Democrats is not an officially or recognized organization and is working to gather interested students to get the group started. In addition, Wartburg Republicans have not been reestablished as a student organization since the 2022-2023 academic year. If a group of students wish to revive the Wartburg Republicans, they should contact Amy Tucker with Student Life. Waverly is home to five locations where residents can vote during the 2024 election. Night Vision News videographer Jace Holes checked out some of those locations. Waverly, Iowa is home to five different polling locations, one for each ward in the city. Voters in Waverly got to vote for the United States President and Vice President, one representative in the Iowa House and a representative in the United States House of Representatives. They also got to vote for a variety of local races, including the county sheriff and county auditor. Voters in Waverly also voted for a couple of new amenities in town. Renovations to the Waverly Golf Course were on the ballot, as well as a new swimming pool. As results come in, Waverly residents will know if those new amenities will be coming to town. Reporting for Night Vision News, I'm Jax Cadell. Thank you, Jace and Jax, for the explanation how the ward of districts in Waverly work and where each Waverly resident can vote. Coming up after the break, we'll take an in-depth look at the electoral college process and its role in the upcoming election. Discover how this system works and why it matters for your vote. Wartburg College has earned an international reputation for excellence in music, offering degrees in music education, music therapy, music performance, and church music. Students can also earn a dual degree in music therapy and music education. More than one-third of all Wartburg students participate in one of 18 music ensembles, which are open to both music majors and non-majors. To learn more about Wartburg's music program, visit wartburg.edu music. I joined the Master of Arts and Leadership program at Wartburg because I was spending a significant amount of my time in committee meetings and task force meetings and subcommittee meetings and it just felt excessive and I wanted to learn how to maximize my impact as a leader. One of the most impactful things of this program for me was getting to know other people within different areas of expertise and getting to work together and learn together and have community together. I think you can get a master's program just about anywhere, but the impact of Wartburg's program is Wartburg. They have an undeniable commitment to leadership and service, and their professors reflect that. Now I see leadership in every person that I meet, and that potential is truly inspiring. Well, what makes for quality leadership is someone who is aware of the people that they're leading, different personality types, different backgrounds, different understandings, but it's also a quality leader is a person who has a good understanding of themselves. I recently received a promotion and I have absolutely no doubt that my completion of the Masters in Arts of Leadership program at Wartburg had a huge part to play in that. For those unfamiliar with the Electoral College and how it works, it can be difficult to understand. However, when broken down, the system's function and how it serves the United States presidential election is much clearer. The Electoral College can be confusing for those unfamiliar with it, but it serves an important purpose, ensuring that every state, regardless of population, is valued in the presidential election process. This system prevents the concentration of electoral power in larger states like California and gives smaller states a voice. Comprising of 538 electors, the Electoral College includes 435 representatives from the House, 100 senators, two from each state, and three electors for the District of Columbia. To win the presidency, a candidate must secure a majority of at least 270 electoral votes. The process works on a state-by-state -state basis. When voters cast their ballots, they are choosing electors pledged to their candidate. If a candidate wins the majority of votes in a state, 
they receive all of that state's electoral votes, except in Maine and Nebraska, which use a proportional system. The number of electors for each state is based on its congressional representation, meaning more populous states have more electors, while less populous states have a minimum of three. This balance is essential for promoting national unity and ensuring all regions have a say in electing the president. Overall, the Electoral College is designed to maintain a fair and equitable electoral process across the country. Ultimately, while the Electoral College is complicated, it works to ensure each state is valued in the election and more populous states don't hold all the power in the presidential election. As of November 5, 2024, at 8.45 p.m. in the Iowa Senate race, Republican candidate Ashley Hinson is currently leading with 50.6% of the vote, followed by Democratic candidate Sarah Corkery with 48.2%. Independent candidate Jody Madlam Puppet holds a 1.2%, with 2% of the votes in. This accounted for 10,634 reported votes. As of November 5, 2024, at 9.05 p.m., former United States President Donald Trump currently has 198 electoral votes, while Vice President Kamala Harris has 99 electoral votes. State Representative District 57 Democrat Sean Ellerbrock, Republican Pat Grassley, or State Republican District 58 Democrat Gail Allison, Republican Charlie Thompson, don't have results from these two polls, but we will keep you updated. Thanks for tuning in to Night Vision News election coverage. And to stay updated on all our election news and Night Vision News content, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Warburg DJC. From all of us here at KV News, thanks for watching and don't forget to make your voice heard. Have a great night and stay tuned for another segment as we finalize the results in the coming days. Good morning and welcome to a special election result edition of Night Vision News. I'm Landon Jepson. And I'm Josephine Lunesca Sprimhall. Thank you for joining us as we cover the outcomes of key state and national races in the 2024 election. From local precinct results to national results, we'll break down what last night's vote means for our future. Stay with us for in-depth coverage and analysis of the election results as they continue to come in. Let's dive right into the biggest wins and losses of this historic night. As of November 6, 2024, at 12.30 p.m., former United States President Donald J. Trump has won the presidency, approving upon his 2020 performance in securing enough swing states to reach 270 electoral votes. Trump leads with 292 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 224. He won key states, including Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Trump received 71,851,772 votes to Harris's 66,980,370. Ballot counting continues, especially in mail-in heavy states like Arizona and Nevada. According to CBS News, President-elect Trump will be sworn in at the presidential inauguration on January 20th, 2025, as specified by the Constitution's 20th Amendment. As of November 6, 2024, 1230 p.m., in the Iowa Senate race, Republican candidate Ashley Hinson wins re-election to Iowa's 2nd Congressional District. Hinson won with 57% of the vote, followed by Warburg alum and Democrat candidate Sarah Corkery with 41.7%. Independent candidate Jody Madlam Puffett holds 1.3%, with 98% of the votes in. This accounts for 405,614 reported votes. As of November 6, 2024, at 12.30 p.m., in-state Representative District 57, Republican candidate Pat Grassley won over Democratic candidate and Wartburg professor Dr. Sean Ellerbrock. Grassley won with 60.2% of the vote followed by Democratic candidate Sean Ellerbrock's 39.8%. With 100% of the votes in, this accounts for 18,017 reported votes. As of November 6, 2024, 12.30 p.m., in State Representative District 58, Republican candidate Charlie Thompson won over Democratic candidate Gail Allison. 
Thompson won with 63.5% of the vote, followed by Democratic candidate Gail Allison with 36.5%. With 100% of the votes in, this accounts for 15,819 reported votes. Thanks for tuning in to Night Vision News election coverage. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at DJC for all your election updates and Night Vision News content. From all of us here at KV News, thank you for watching. Now that the final results are in, we hope you feel energized about your vote and its impact. Have a great rest of your week, and remember that every voice counts in our democracy. Stay tuned for more KV News coverage coming soon.